Soon, borrowers of federal student loans will have to start making payments that have been on pause since March 2020. Last week, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, which wiped away up to $20,000 of debt for all federal student loan borrowers. Here's more. It's orientation day at Southern University for incoming freshmen, less than a week after the U.S. Supreme Court decided to end the federal government's student loan forgiveness program. Many of these incoming students are financing their higher education, tuition, room and board, and living expenses, and it all adds up to debt when they graduate. I took out, I can say, about $6,000 as far as loan just to pay for my housing for two semesters. So no telling as far as the next semester what I have to take out. Darnisha Robinson and Toy Evans are Southern University students and leaders of the student orientation program. So as orientation leaders, we come across students that say like, hey, I don't have the money to pay for housing. So we see a lot of kids that like worried about debt or how am I not gonna get a loan? How am I gonna get a scholarship? Southern University Chancellor and President Dennis Shields can relate to these students' financial concerns. He too financed his college and law school educations. Our students, a significant number of them graduate with $25,000, $30,000 in debt. And you know what's the impact that that has? Well, uh, it means they they don't buy a new car, they don't buy a house, they don't start creating wealth for them and their families until much later in their careers. In Louisiana, the average student loan debt totals $34,525, according to the Education Data Initiative, which ranks the state 25th in the nation when it comes to the size of student loan debt. My personal grad school loans are at 6.8%, and my home mortgage is at only 3%. So when you think about the long-term repayment options of any loan, when the interest rate's higher, it's going to take you possibly longer to pay it off because interest will compound, or depending on how the loan is set up, or it will take a higher payment amount. Jessica Sharon is president of Louisiana Jumpstart, a statewide coalition of banks, credit unions, nonprofits, and government agencies that foster financial education across Louisiana. You have individuals who are paying on student loans 10, 20, even 30 years, and some people never pay them off. Debt repayment can't keep pace with a rising cost of living and paychecks. That's part of the problem. Another factor? predatory lending practices, lenders charging high interest rates on student loans, a lack of financial literacy, another root cause of mounting student loan debt. Chancellor Shields sees more robust subsidies for higher education as part of the solution. What President Biden was actually trying to do is actually replace that subsidy on higher education. There's all kinds of resources that we bring to bear on these students. As what hasn't kept up is the way we've subsidized public higher education. Part of the challenge we have in terms of the narrative is that we have this very American sense that people shouldn't get anything they don't deserve. I wasn't in more, any more entitled to a, a, you know, a, a fairly low cost education than any of these young people walking around today. We need to change the narrative about how we talk about it. Is higher education valuable? You get some pushback on that. Congress is working on alternative solutions to mounting student debt and higher education costs. U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy, a critic of President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, co-authored proposed legislation focused on financial literacy and lending transparency. We are now with, with student loan borrowers on the hook for $1.6 trillion. President Biden's approach doesn't address the student loan crisis. It doesn't forgive it. It just transfers it to other people who either never took student loans or who uh, chose to pay theirs back. Senator Cassidy is calling for more data made available to students to help them analyze the potential return on investment in higher education. A lot of kids end up taking on student loan debt, going into a curriculum, and they're never going to earn enough money to pay back the student loan. If I enter this curriculum at this university, what's my likelihood of graduating? How much money am I going to have to borrow on average? And what will I earn if I graduate in this curriculum? There are financial resources other than federal student loans. At the state level, there's START, 
Louisiana's 529 College Savings Program, and TOPS, merit-based scholarships for Louisiana residents, plus assorted scholarships and grants with different qualifications. However, tuition is oftentimes, when you include fees, much higher than what's given for TOPS. And so even for students who qualified for that, it doesn't cover everything that they have to pay. And we also live in a state where the average income is much lower and over 20% of individuals live in poverty, one of the highest in the nation. For those who take out student loans and have trouble paying them back, there are options as well. There's repayment options that are based on your income, based on how much you earn as you go. It's called uh, earn as you go plan. And there's also forgiveness for certain type of jobs. So for things like individuals who work for government jobs or nonprofits, there may be opportunities for their loans to be forgiven at some point or in some fashion. With the interest rate on many student loans nearly double that of a home mortgage, the math adds up to a huge setback for quality of life, financial security, and some argue society at large. You know, I mean, that's the choice that we're making as a society that we're going to place that burden more on the actual individual as opposed to seeing it as society investing in its well-being. Instead of saying, well, if it's, only a, it's only a private good for somebody to get a college degree. It's actually a public good. 